The winter is here and the cold and bitter weather. We need to take care of our little friends, the birds. Well, as always, we certainly do. At this time of the year, there are two small birds, though, in particular, that are associated with Christmas. And they are, of course, we know the robin and the wren. And to tell us the history going back and surrounding these gorgeous little birds is our resident folklorist, Shane Lahan. Great to have you with us. Great to be here, everyone. Especially around this time of the year. It's lovely. Now, the robin, Shane, you know, I always think of the robin at Christmas time. Yeah, I think the robin is there. You know, I started looking at the birds much more. I think over COVID, we put out the the theatres. Um, there's a great fan of the show, her, her name is uh, Marie Crowley, and I was talking to her daughter, Anya, and she was asking me, Shane, um, what kind of feeder to buy? And I was wondering why she was asking me, because out my back, I have about 25 feeders. I had there, and it's a bit like Heathrow, you know, there are birds coming in from left, right, and centre, you know. And uh, my poor father, God be good to him, he was, he was a great man for uh, advertising and doing things. And when he used to be designing Christmas cards for people, he had this little logo at the back, don't forget to feed the birds, you know. So I think I, I picked it up from him in many yeah, ways. Yeah, because he was a commercial artist, wasn't he? He was a commercial he? artist, and you know, long before computers, this is his handwriting, oh, would you believe that? Like God, isn't yeah. that amazing? But what was amazing is that I'd be looking at all those birds, but still my favourites are the robin at this time of the year and the wren. Yeah. The wren is out the front, uh, he doesn't really get on with the other birds so much, but the robin is down on the ground. And always at this time of the year. I love the wren sound. Yeah, the, oh, the wren is absolutely beautiful, just that, that high pitch, beautiful. Mm. The wren actually can sing for its body weight louder than any other bird that we have. You'd notice if, that, if, wouldn't you, if, in the if, garden? If, you can hear the, the, yeah. the rain from everywhere. But just going back, the robin, first of all, was Santi's robin. We used to always call it Santi's robin. And what would happen is that long before Elf and the Shelf ever made an appearance, let's mm-hmm. say, the robin was doing the job here in Ireland. Okay. And and if we were, like, if we were messing around in the house, my brother had me in a headlock or anything like that, what would happen is my mother would say, look, Santi's robin is looking in. I never knew that. Oh, God. And we'd be absolutely terrified. We'd stop at everything. Because he'd go back to Santa Claus. Oh, go back to Santa and tell us that we were being bold. So, you know, the robin was absolutely huge. Yeah. But the robin, the great thing about the robin is that the, he's a cheeky robin. He's conspicuous. You know, long, if you were digging a renting later on in the year, the robin would be up beside you, you know, right, right. <laughs> right and they're still not shy or anything. No, and what would happen as well then is they have the beautiful red breast. Mm. Yes. And we, we, they stand out in the, in the snow, they stand out. And there's great stories in the Irish folk tradition as to how they cut their red breast. One is, is that they were plucking out, you know, the, uh, our Lord was on the cross yeah, yeah. and plucking out the thorns from the crown of thorns or even plucking out the, the nails in the cross. The blood went down and, and that's... Onto the but bird. there's another association with Christmas. One story is that the Holy Family were on, on the flight into Egypt and they were heading off and obviously Mary, there was blood coming from Mary after the birth or something of that sort. The robin covered up all the tracks of the, the Holy Family by taking over the leaves and that's how it got its, oh, its red I never heard that, no. And the other one is that in the manger, with the, the infant Jesus in the manger, there was an old fire going on and it was going out and the robin came in and flapped its wings to bell us up the, flower, the, the fire to heat the little infant and therefore got its red breast in that uh, way. So they're gorgeous associations yeah. at Christmas and, and the robin in particular. It's fairly territorial though, isn't it? They're, they're cheeky out, like they're, I'd be watching the robin now and sure enough, if there's anyone in its space, it'll jump about and it will, it will attack the others and, and, and so on. Mm. But there's, there's, there's something, you never caught the robin the robin was kind of sacred. Yeah. There's a lovely English phrase which says, um, uh, a robin red breast in a cage puts all of heaven in a rage. So p- kids long ago used to catch the birds, yeah. you know. We used to have little uh, traps for them and so on. But if you caught a robin, you would leave it go and say, give me a thrush the next time or a blackbird the next it's time. It's not meant to be in a cage. Not meant to be in, in a cage. Yeah. They are gorgeous though. And you I love to see them. You coming up to people when they put food in their hand. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah. more close to But you. there's great stories too, Dahi, that people would think because they were always affectionate to people who were maybe sick or who were dying and yeah. so on. There's an association if you see, if a robin comes into the house, that was considered to be important of, of, of death in the house and so on. And I was talking to um, a lovely lady the other day, Betty Dillon up in Mill Street, and she was telling me the story that people believed so much that a robin would be a, a sign of death. There was this fellow, he was a bit sick, and uh, he, was, he wasn't too bad now at all, but didn't the robin come in and flew into the house and went in under his bed? And so much so, she was absolutely sure he was going to die. She rang the undertaker straight away, <laughs> right? Absolutely. And got on to everyone to say, listen, the funeral will be on now tomorrow. <laughs> and, uh, she was so certain that that was going to be the case. So people have that in their heads, you know. Um, there is that sort of association. And how do you think that was so popular on the Christmas card? 
stars? Is it just the way they look and the kind of stories with Jesus, I, I, I guess? I, I think so. The robin is there. I think, I think birds and the rain as well. Okay, the robin and the rain come together. The robin appears because it's more picturesque and it's got the lovely red bread yeah, and so pretty, on. Yeah. But I suppose, um, put it this way, there's a lovely English folklore as well. The, the robin, red breast and the rain are God Almighty's cock and hen. So the robin, red breast and the rain yeah, often were, were seen, to, seen together. They came together. Yeah, they were the so, Christmas kind of emblems. And, and the rain was also something that you didn't hunt uh, uh, except at Christmas time. Now we'll come to that in a moment. Mm -hmm. But the rain has huge tradition in Ireland. I was looking at an old Irish text, uh, a Middle Irish text the other night. It's called Drain On or, or, or Drain Ain. And it comes from the Druid bird. That's the, the, the term yeah. for the, dro the Droline. Oh, and, and what it is, and this is really interesting, there was a, a list of things that the, if you saw a rain, if you saw, if you heard singing from the right, from the south, from the west, if it came between you and the sun, mm -hmm. it would mean a certain thing was going to happen and other things were going to happen. That's where we get the expression, a little bird told me. You know when oh. we say to someone, yeah, yeah, a little yes. bird told so, me. prognostications and auguries concerning the, the, the rain and when people saw them, they knew what was going to happen, and that's where a little bird told yeah, me. Because, because they are same. tiny, aren't they? They're yeah. really, really small. They, they, they're actually not our smallest bird. The yeah. gold crest is actually smaller, but there, there are more wrens around, and they really are. Yeah. But they're also the king of the birds. Yeah. And every child in, in the world knows the story of, rhyme, yeah. of how, how the, 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 the wren became the king of the birds. As the eagle went up, the wren, of course, being small and tiny, jumped up on top of its back. The, the eagle was there flying up as high as it possibly could. When it got up to the top, it said, I am the king of the birds. And what did the wren do? He said, no, you're not. And he jumped up in the air and said, I flew higher. But people don't know that what happened then is that the eagle hit the wren. The wren dropped down onto the ground. And because of that, the wren can never fly any higher than a bush or a hedge or maybe just as high as the patch because yeah. that's where people used to catch the rain long go as well yeah. in, inside the but what was the whole thing about hunting the rain then so what did the rain do to anyone so there you go yeah. like so it seems really strange that this kind of sacred bird that was kept and so on why did people go out hunting the rain at, at, at christmas time and um, it's really got to do the rain is almost like the symbol of the year and it's almost like the symbol of fertility the rain lays 12 eggs would you believe that wow. in a tiny little nest, beautiful round nest, little hole that goes in, and 12 being almost like the 12 months of the yeah. year, oh. and also this uh, this fertility that the rain has, when you come to the end of the cycle of fertility, it almost seems logical in a strange way that you would put the end to one cycle and that you would start another. And of course, what we have then is the great living tradition of hunting the ran and people going around. And what they used to use, of course, was mm. the holly bush. The ran, the ran, the king of, of all yourself, birds. Yeah. And Stephen say was caught in the furs. Up at the kettle, down with the pan, give us a penny to, to bury, bury the, to the, ran. the ran. What they were looking for when people came around, they would, would they would dress up. They would use the the straws. Yeah, or they but would it just fine. You've got the little rant in there in well, the well, it's the best thing. I, there, I, I'd like to point out they didn't kill the rant. Well, no, I did it, and it's not a rant at all. It's actually a Christmas decoration <laughs> that I kind of <laughs> daw faked to look like a little bit better. So, like did people have the holly bush in their house, Shane, before we had Christmas? No, trees? this was this. Well, actually, you're absolutely right. You're bringing the greenery in. You're bringing yeah. in the evergreen. This actually is the kind of the Irish precursor, if you like, to, to the Christmas, Christmas tree yeah. that's there. But they brought they they decorated with ribbon with oh, water around, flowers yeah. mm -hmm. they went around and the rain boys literally went from and you know I know that he done in Dingle there's yeah. a massive tradition of the rain boys sure. and again Aoife Granville my, my great pal she's mm -hmm. done wonderful studies of the rain down there but it was actually all around the country mm -hmm. it just wasn't Dingle now is probably the great survivor of yeah. the tradition if you like but people would have dressed up they would have would be a time of guising as we call it mm -hmm. so interestingly enough between Samhain at Halloween, mm -hmm. okay, and between Bridget's Day with the Biddy Boys, right throughout this period, the hibernation period, the winter period, people dressed up in disguise. Yeah. And they had different rituals and different traditions to mark the beginning of the new but, year. But the Rand, the, the Rand Day in Dingle, they go out very early in the morning, Shim. Absolutely. Wh why weren't they allowed to go out during the day? Well, I suppose what you were doing really is that you were going at, at the crux between day and, and yeah. night, as it were. So we, we're on to St. Stephen's Day now, that yeah. day, and it would come at that sort of junction between the two. One of the new theories that has come out about the RAN is that, you know, we have um, we have the, the, the Saint um, John the Evangelist, okay, mm -hmm. who's actually the symbol of the eagle, mm -hmm. and by parading the rain, 
which is kind of a, a another type of eagle, if you like, that that was the, his festival is on the 27th. So you do so on the eve of the festival as well. So right throughout my studies and my scholarship, I've been looking at a myriad of different explanations as to why people kill, kill the ram. But what is great for me is that the tradition is still alive, that people still uphold it. Without killing the bird. Without, without yeah. killing the bird now. And in the past, they did kill the bird. And then up to, up a number of counts where they, they used to tie the live ram onto I, the I, I remember yeah, seeing, I that, yeah. seeing yeah, yeah. a little bird. They used to carry this almost like a box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a little thing. That but have according a... to the scholars, that's a fairly new idea okay. as well. What uh, about this little thing? Tell us what this yes. is. Yes. So these are what we call the, 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 the straws or the sabini. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly you'd be coming to the end of the harvest or the festival. You'd have plenty of straw around. Mm -hmm. And when you wanted to disguise yourself in the past, oh, the way that you did that, of course, was to use what was at, at hand. And that would have been the straws. And of course, this was the mask. This is what you put on over your head, it was your hat, and your face wasn't to be seen and nobody knew who you were and so on. Quite often the rain boys were bachelors who were actually not uh, not not yet married and what would happen is that they would have money then for the rain dance yeah. and then they'd invite everyone in so you're promoting fertility as well at this time the, the love and craft that goes into making those shit. oh sure listen it's great it looks and, lovely and too doesn't it? It, is, it is and there's something furry i suppose archetypical of this when i see this i'm transported immediately back into that yeah. time yeah. and that age and that sort of yeah. period would, would different rounds have different symbols like the top of that yeah you you had um sometimes depending on what what, what was growing if it was rye on the iron islands for example the shaggle, if you had uh, wheat in a certain area, if you had oats, which was the most common sort of cereal, you would have a, a different area. You'd strip off the grain and then you would plait it in different sort of ways. Some people left them out as kind of horns, as it were. Yeah. Uh, there was all sorts of different sort of features. Some areas... You could go to, you know, it's almost African yeah. tribal in some absolutely. ways looking. Yeah. You know, it just yeah. shows you that the traditions no, it's a very worldwide... Prime, a very primal yeah, thing. Very yeah, much absolutely. Yeah. Great to have you as so always. So brilliant as always. And listen, happy Christmas and to you. Oh, yeah. Fabulous We time. sit back here more and just listen to Shane. We love it. Oh, we feel so <laughs> You make us all, all feel young, Shane. We do. Cool. And you make Thank us all feel very kind of traditional. We want yeah. to kind of keep those things going, which is really important. Mm -hmm. Shane is brilliant. No, Mario Rosen talks about He doesn't make us feel any of those things. He's just afraid. Yes, he's a man of many parts. And now he's getting back 